Hello, uh, welcome to the Jenkins Governance Meeting. Today is May 5th, and we have uh, multiple participants on the call. So we are doing a regular session. We've got a lot of items uh, to discuss today. Uh, Gavin will be taking the meeting notes. Thanks a lot to him for the previous meeting. Uh, the meeting notes were maybe three times larger than before. And yeah, uh, everyone else is also encouraged uh, to contribute because this document is shared for editing. Okay, let's start from news. The first big news, which of course we missed, is five years since the Jenkins 2.0. So it happened on uh, April 20th, uh, 2016. And yeah. mm, so, well, just congrats. We didn't uh, do much celebration around that. But there is still an opportunity to do that if someone is willing to take this action item. Um, but yeah. Um, it's just for your information. So, thank you to the zero was nice. We introduced a pipeline by default. We did plugin unbundling. We also uh, did quite a lot of changes here and there and uh, removed agents from the terminology. So yeah, there are some things, uh, sorry, we removed slaves from the terminology. So definitely something to celebrate. If anyone wants to take an action item on that, please do so. Otherwise, it will be probably just a tweet. Okay. Other news, we've got uh, 2.277.4 release. It was just a few hours ago. Mark, would you like to summarize it? Released, had some infrastructure surprises, delighted has a relatively few backports. Um, we'll be discussing, I'll be discussing with Darren Pope in a live stream later this week as well. Okay. Good. So basically everything is already available for downloads, right? It is confirmed available. We will upgrade ci.jenkins.io later, later today as it gets a little less busy. Yeah, and it's not a security release, so basically if you're affected uh, by the issues and if you want to get a backport, just update when you're ready. Okay, then she could Africa's uh, summary, maybe uh, for you again, Mark. Yeah, so five, uh, five women from Africa were part of a large contingent of people who applied for the opportunity to spend one month contributing to open source software. Jenkins and two other projects were the mentoring organizations, five mentors from Jenkins, assisted as these this group of five women contributed pipeline help examples, uh, pipeline documentation. Uh, project was a great success, plenty of things that we learned from it. Retrospective will likely happen this Friday with, with them. We've got a good retrospective document already assembled and we'll gather it a little further and then do one final meeting to be sure we capture the things we learned so that we know how to do this better the next time. Is there going to be any, um, is it, I don't even know how to ask the question. Oh, please, is, yeah. is the, is the uh, retrospective plan to be like, are you planning to take your learnings from retrospective and share it to the wider audience? Or is it going to be limited to this event and how are you going to do it? So I'll, I intend to do a blog post to Jenkins.io highlighting it. I'll, I'll probably include notes from the retrospective in that blog post. The, 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 the participants were also willing to assist in a talk at DevOps World. So I'm gonna propose a talk at DevOps World for it. We'll do some other things like that. I think Oleg had also suggested an online meetup. And again, I think that's a great idea that we should consider as ways to highlight, hey, it's, it's possible to come into the Jenkins project contribute significantly, uh, even if you have no prior Java experience in less than 30 days, we got these people ramped up, compiling plugins, loading those plugins, working with them. It was, it was a good experience, I think. Now, lots of, lots of things we learned and we'll do better next time. Yeah, I'm not sure what is our retrospective doc. I thought it's, it's, just... it's, in, it's in the same document. It's in yeah, the retrospective the section there, page 14 and beyond. Mm, right. So we will just shave it. So again, eventually the document will be referenced uh, somewhere from Jenkins.io, maybe. 
Okay. Double click scan. Yeah, that document actually already that the top level of that document is already referenced from Jenkins.io, but we'll we'll do a, a summary of the retrospective. I think would be a good part of the blog post. Yep, that's for sure. We do the same for JSOC. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else on Shukut Africa? Then uh, thanks a lot to Mark, uh, Christian, Angelic, and Mac Mark Roberts for running this event and for mentoring there. We hope it was a great experience for everyone. And of course, thanks for the uh, to the mentees. Yeah, thanks to all mentors and obviously mentees. Okay, moving on. DevOps World uh, call for papers. So firstly, it happens. It was announced. The deadline is May 20th. So you have just two weeks left. Um, yesterday, together with Alice, we did a Jenkins online meetup about um, the community agenda. So at this meetup, we basically spent some time to provide a review of what we are doing uh, as Jenkins community at DevOps World. And also there was a discussion of uh, what to do as a part of um, CFP. So the recording is already published, same for the slides. So we can take a look. And yeah, if you just want to feel some nostalgia, definitely go to this presentation because I put a few photos there. Uh, but yeah, so it's a rather overview. So the presentation was relatively short. And yeah, see. Sorry, was it, this was the presentation of that was given at the meetup, or is this a presentation for people? Yeah, at the meetup. So basically, we did it together with Alisa. We will be doing another session uh, next week uh, for OPAC time zone together with Rick and maybe Victor Martinez. Um, but yeah, so yeah, here you can see Mark, uh, Evelina, KK. There was also Uli somewhere. Yeah, here's Uli. Uh, yep. So nice times. Hopefully, we will be able to repeat <laughs> it sometime. I'm another on this floor. You said another one right. will be next week for the APOC time yes. zone? So basically, we just wanted to provide some uh, overview, provide some concepts. Uh, because yeah, again, uh, DevOps world is more than just a conference for us. We also plan to have contributor summit and other things. Many things actually TBD, uh, but yeah, hopefully they will be confirmed. Just a second, where well, is all this info? Yeah, so what we have confirmed by the moment, we will have two community workshops. One is about uh, contributing to Jenkins. Another is likely about Jenkins pipelines. Um, TBD, then there will be community track. Also, there will be continuous delivery foundation track, uh, which will also include some talks about Jenkins. Practitioner track may include them as well. Then community keynote is to be decided. Most likely it will be by the continuous delivery foundation, but if you have major announcements to share as a Jenkins project, welcome. Then there will be ask the experts and uh, hopefully contributor summit all to be confirmed. And we're yep. not doing uh, Jenkins Awards at this time because Jenkins Awards will happen at CDCon. And gentle reminder to everyone, uh, we still have some time to submit nominations. So it's open until May 14th. It might be worth for the keynote to have, uh, um, I know it's a later topic, but plugin deprecation um, policy should be a good one to announce there. Not sure, but it's definitely something to be discussed. And so, yeah, again, mm -hmm. I, I don't know how much time we would get, uh, what would be the scope. There will be discussions about Jenkins 3 or something like that. If we do Jenkins 3 announcement, we can just uh, merge uh, the plugin data replication under that. But yeah, in the current state, it feels unlikely that we will be able to announce it uh, in autumn even if everything goes well, because yeah, the merge window will be mid to July. It's just two months from now. And yeah, I'm still not allowed to go to the community with full, my propo with full proposal. Mm, okay. So yeah, anyway, there are three nominations for Jenkins project. 
Well, a quick question regarding yeah. the keynote. Aren't keynotes usually good news? How would you mean, uh, anyone think that the plugin deprecation policy is positive for any users? It's not <laughs> like we're doing, it's not like we're improving the situation there. We're just making it easier for us to make changes. But uh, yeah. the obvious side effect is that all of those terrible long tail plugins that haven't been updated in years will stop working rather than limping along as they do today. So that really doesn't feel like an let's get up on stage and proudly pro proclaim that we're breaking everyone's Jenkins kind of topic. I think we're calling a bit here. So, yeah, I think you're right, but it's something to be discussed. And uh, yeah. yeah, I think there's a positive way to phrase it as long as indeed we can show that we have done other things and saying this is a way for us to focus our energy on what is actually, you know, uh, making Jenkins go, f you know, um, forward rather than focusing on making nine years old plugins that nobody really uses like 60 times or something installed worldwide to keep to, to keep those ones working i think people would prefer the community to work on maybe making i don't know pipeline shine even more or something we're already not keeping them running as evidenced by tables to diffs so i really Oh, well, uh, we have a lot of topics, so uh, let's discuss this. Yeah, so just uh, to move on, because right now we don't even have consensus of what we do. Well, not uh, everywhere. Uh -huh. But yeah, let's see. So what else? Um, yeah, nominations, I just put the link. What is important topic there? That there are only three nominations listed in our blog post, but there are the nominations where Jenkins contributors may be potentially eligible. So there are also uh, global CDF nominations, like top CDF ambassador, top CDF contributor, GitOps evangelist. We, I guess we already have Jenkins contributors in all categories, but if you think about someone, just put them here. And there we also uh, two new awards just announced uh, last week. It's uh, top CDF end user and uh, top GitOps end user. So basically, it would be just a company or whomever using, let's say, one of Jenkins projects. Um, that's, for example. And the, again, if you have a company which would be a big highlight, think about that. And maybe it's also an opportunity to nominate someone. OK, moving on. Uh, yeah, so just a quick update. Um, just a few hours ago, we've got confirmation about number of slots we get. So announcement that yeah, we will have Jenkins projects this year. Um, the, the number of projects is to be announced and the projects are also to be announced. The announcement will happen on May 17th, so it's uh, two weeks from now. But, yeah, I think you will uh, like uh, the announced projects. Yeah, basically that's it about JSOC. We're still in the uh, dark mode until the uh, projects are announced. Mark, you wanted to ask something? I, I was just gonna note that we are in dark mode. So no comment should be made by us, right? Because that's Google's thing to announce, not ours, right? Or like that's the, the way it is, it's... Mm, we will do our announcement as well, but firstly it uh, should be official on the Google side because firstly decisions may change. Some students may appear uh, to be not eligible. There might be other organizations reaching out and discussing uh, uh, duplications. So we are not ready to do announcements by now because it may change. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so who, uh, yeah, some people on this call are in the mentor channel, so you will be able to see the summary by the end of the day. Okay. So moving on, confirm the CDF talk project representative. Uh, so for those who were not following this thread, uh, the continuous delivery foundation announced elections for CDF talk members. They were, there were changes. 
because uh, this year they will be actually electing uh, four representatives among six projects. Uh, but uh, each of six projects are expected to make a nomination. And what it means is that we as a Jenkins project should also nominate uh, someone. And the deadline is May 14th, so we still have some time. But uh, this is the last governance meeting before the nomination happens. So unless we change the process, we should sign off some, uh, the nomination today. So if uh, anyone wants, we can extend it, uh, but we will need to agree what would be the process after that. And yeah, currently basically it's only me nominated. Um, yeah. If someone uh, uh, wants to nominate themselves or nominate someone, it's a great time to speak up. I'm not getting out of this. I don't see any reason to extend it. Yeah, full support from me for you being the nominee. Oh, like, thank you for being willing. Yes, thank you. Plus one. Okay. Evelina? Yeah, I was, I was showing a thumbs up, but then I realized that probably you have the browser full screen or something. So oh, I have several faces, but uh, you are not on the screen at this time. Oh, okay. Yeah. We have um, too many people this week. Well, that's I can a good go. Sign. <laughs> no, I'm I'm happy. I'm happy with you being our candidate, definitely. Okay, yeah, then I think it's confirmed. So, yeah. Thanks, everyone. There will be still elections ahead. I have no idea how these elections will happen, uh, but yeah, we will figure out as we go. And yeah, other projects also are for election. So Jenkins X will be like uh, making the nomination, uh, same for Tecton, uh, same uh, for Spinnaker. And uh, now there is also Screwdriver and Artelius. So they will also make nominations. Okay. Uh, so anything else on uh, CDF talk representative? Then uh, the topic from Batiste about removing uh, common register from the core. Yep. So um, for anybody who didn't uh, have the time to read the developer, developers mailing list, I sent uh, a heads up there too about this removal. So we are working uh, to update Jenkins. So um, in short, you may have seen or you may be aware that Jenkins has a uh, common digester 2.1 in its dependency tree, which is a dependency that was released in 2010. Uh, so it's even older than Guava. So after many discussions with various people, in, in, including especially in that thread, we got feedback from some people. I think Jesse mostly said something like digester is not even fixable really. We should just, just get rid of it. So instead of trying to, you know, update it to commons digester three, which anyways had a different um, FQN, uh, we decided to just remove it altogether. But then it would have the second step would be to it was to decide, you know, whether we would create a detached plugin. Uh, and then again, I think um, what we've done is partly based on the feedback of Jesse's one, which I remember. I think Tim said something similar that you know we should be creating a detached plugin unless we can fix the ecosystem, which is what we're doing. So we pursued this the latter because, you know, also we don't think, uh, uh, when I say we, it's, it's I, I, I'm trying to speak for the Jenkins project, but obviously that's more my opinion at this point, um, that removing it is a, is a more, uh, the cleaner thing to do. Obviously this has a, the big and obvious caveat that I think Daniel uh, pointed out um, uh, on the PR itself at some point before we, we fixed a, more, a, few, a few more things. And on the, the thread on the dev list. Um, so uh, we filed a PR for every single plugin we could find was using it, but uh, many, many plugins have been abandoned for years. So I guess we have to decide as a community whether we you know, release those old things 
uh, that uh, that are not even installed a lot of times in the world. Uh, maybe sending an, an ambiguous uh, you know message to the world that those plugins are maintained somehow, which they are not really. Or we have accept that this is uh, one of the one of the first, or at least one occurrence of shifting gears uh, that that was you know posted on Jenkins I website already almost three years ago about the fact that you know to move the, the Jenkins project forward we need to break a few things. Again, we filed a PR for everything that is impacted, but again, I don't think uh, many of those uh, will just find somebody uh, willing to just you know. Uh, own this, maintain it, merge it, release it, basically. Um, so I got two questions. Um, one, there's probably a lot of people like me that have no idea what this does and why we want to keep it versus why we want to remove it. Um, yeah, actually, it's just the one question. So what does it do? Digester is a library for parsing XML, at least. Uh, I, I, I think it's only what it does. Um, the, the, the big thing is that even if some people could be still using the library per se, uh, it has wrong defaults, I would say. Uh, I'm, I'm just repeating my understanding, uh, especially uh, from people like Daniel, who uh, insisted that you know we make sure that the, 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 the way digester is uh, um, um, instantiated is using the, the, the non-default settings to be secure. And uh, I think Jesse said something like this on the PR that, you know, there's no way, uh, no easy way to make this secure, really. Uh, and more importantly, the, uh, the, the fully qualified package names of this library anyways changed between the, the version that we're removing and the, the version three. So effectively, upgrading would mean anyways upgrading the ecosystem like we're doing. So, you know, it, it's that's why removing it from the core, because again, it's a library from 2010, which is de facto, you know, not a great thing in, in 20, 2021, uh, 11 years old library, uh, which is stuffed with uh, with um, CV, non CVEs. Most, if not all of them are um, uh, unreachable normally, but could, could be someday, or uh, basically also making the security posture of Jenkins in the world not great. Uh, when companies basically, basically scan uh, Jenkins, they find a lot of things that, you know, make them, uh, again, I th in my opinion, in 2021, more and more complex, more and more uh, tricky that the security teams accept this, this tool, uh, you know, in their toolbox, you know? So looking at Oleg's screen share, when you created the PRs for other projects, did you just, um, looks like you upgraded to Digester 3 where possible, and then we're, your plan was to remove it from core entirely? Yep, this is what you're seeing right now. Uh, so not not right now, sorry. This is Emma. This is basically one of the plugins that we think will uh, we'll never get a release. Uh, if if you go back, Oleg, or on another tab or something to the original PR, uh, you will see that I've I've created um, uh, to this this table here that's basically pointing to everything that's impacted. And when I put on the left side uh, a red red circle, it's basically I, when when I really believe that we won't see anybody releasing and fixing this. So those plugins are de facto uh, going to be broken from now on. Um, and, and, and if you look at the diff, you will see that on this PR indeed, we are removing altogether um, the digester library from the, the dependency tree, not just upgrading it or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah. It's worth mentioning that when we do such changes, there is always a risk that there would be third party plugins Example, uh, there are vendors uh, who provide their plugins outside of the main repository, like, let's say Sonar. Um, we do not uh, scan and analyze these plugins by default. And also there are zillions of proprietary plugins uh, developed uh, by companies just for their own use. So yep. there is a risk that something else will be broken from sure. this. Sure, sure. I mean, this is always, uh, you know, pros and cons, yep. you know. Um, 
uh, for sh w about what you just said, though, for open source plugins, uh, we didn't do just a scan using the search feature. We also used usages in plugin feature uh, tool. That that's if if uh, people here don't know all about this one, basically is a tool that is going to retrieve all HPIs from uh, all every every single uh, Jenkins plugins in the ecosystem and scan the bytecode to see where whether there is a usage of uh, a given uh, class in that. And so we did that on, on orgs, org Apache Commons Digester, Digester, the class, uh, the, the one from Jenkins Core itself. And Daniel, I think, was nice enough to, 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 to catch our uh, one of the, the mistakes we did and, and to scan for the whole uh, old classes from Digester, basically. And this, this showed, as far as I understood, what Daniel wrote, like in the last comments or something, on this, of, the, of this very PR, uh, not, not um, uh, additional hits in terms of findings. So the list at the, the top of this PR uh, should be still accurate. Mm -hmm. It is deemed to fix the whole ecosystem, provided, again, which is <laughs> not going to happen as far as I, uh, I think. Um, provided we would merge and release every single PR that we have filed. Yeah. But, uh, we still have an uh, alternative because even if we don't ship it uh, as a detached plugin, you can ship it as just the API plugin uh, users can install on demand. So we can say that uh, if you have uh, one of these plugins uh, available without a fix, you just install the, this additional plugin and everything starts working. It Good wouldn't point. because the, the API plugin wouldn't be on the class path of this plugin. Uh, yeah, uh, what we can do is detaching and not bundling it, uh, which is an option. But apparently, Jesse somewhere said that this isn't great. I'm, I'm to be honest, I'm a bit confused by the approach chosen here because, as what is as you said. Um, we had the option going for a detached plugin or fixing up at the ecosystem. And you said, yeah, let's fix up the ecosystem. And immediately afterwards, you said, oh, look at all of these plugins we cannot fix. Isn't that I mean, enough? Yeah, I understand what you're saying. So what I mean is that we did, I think, the diligence to file you know, every single PRs. But then I'm saying I don't think as a Jenkins, as a project, as an open source community, we should be you know, releasing. I mean, I understand. OK, right. It's a bit confusing or ambiguous. Um, I'm saying we, yeah, we, I'm, I mean, yeah, we filed a PR that would fix every single plugin that is impacted. But we, I mean, are personally, at least, I'm not very uh, eager on getting and becoming a maintainer on, on uh, VSS, Genexus, Java test report, blame subversion. Uh, I think those plugins are not used enough to be to mandating to be mandating that basically. So yes, uh, um, we have done to to show that we we value that. But on the other hand, I think it's it's an example of shifting gears and yes, accepting that breaking some things is uh, a choice that we can do, I think we could do, we maybe should do, um, just to move forward and keep things simple, basically. Yeah, I guess we would need a JEP anyway, taking the conversation on the mailing list. Maybe before the JEP is filed, it makes sense to build a consensus of what paths we choose. Because if that's, Daniel that's still the... has the reservations about uh, the chosen approach, maybe we need to resolve it before we spend time on JEPs. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, so Daniel pointed rightfully uh, uh, on the, the compatibility matters of the com governance document, but indeed, uh, as was pointed out by Liam, um, uh, maybe you, you can open this one if you know what I mean, uh, Oleg, but so that just people don't, don't not, not as knowledgeable as about that uh, can see uh, uh, watching this record as a recording later, could see what we talk about. But this, uh, this phrasing also talks about being very careful. I think we are being careful here. Uh, you know, th this phrase, does it mean that we don't break anything? Uh, I think it's it's we know that as, as professional in, in software that breaking nothing ever is also something to keep you you know uh, is an in, impediment to 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 innovate and to move forward. Sometimes mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. might be a good reasoning kind of catalyst and candidate for Jenkins 3.0. Right, this is something that will break. Um, it's a major version. A lot of people complain that we release 
uh, non-major versions that have breaking changes, even though our definition of breaking is different. So that would be a good excuse as something that would be like, okay, we've released this new, we've changed the, the behavior. Some plugins are going to break. That's 3.0. Yeah. And we just start collecting a bunch of these changes that we want to do for 3.0 release. Yeah, but I mean, I, I like the, 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 the rationale. The only big caveat that I see with that rationale is that then do you bump the major version each time you have something like this? And because I know, for instance, Guava is coming. We are working on Guava too. Yeah. And so uh, but do, we, do we bump to four then when we reach Guava stage and so on, you know? I, I'm honestly okay with that as well. But I mean, there's no reason we can't, you can't wait to, to merge this for Guava as well. Right, that both of those could be a 3.0 release. Yeah, Guava yeah. is going to take um, more time. There are 300 plugins inspected as far as our analysis yeah. isn't going. But I mean, Chrome is now on 87 or, or a 99 or yeah. something like that. Like they're releasing major versions all the time and that's totally fine as well. Actually, yeah. changing uh, the version in schema is, uh, was one of uh, proposals for Jenkins 3. So yeah. as long as I'm cleared uh, to publish my proposal, hello, Mark, um, I will uh, be happy to do that. I think as long as we're clear with users, I don't think, I think to Daniel's point and to your point, um, breaking something is not something we want to do often, but it's not a problem to do as long as we're good at communicating it. I'm not necessarily sure we are good at communicating it and a major version would be a key to users that there will be something breaking. We've never had Simber, so starting now seems kind of weird. Uh, plus, uh, if we if we go the route, and I and I hope we continue. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I think it's it's good that we look at all of those outdated dependencies. I mean, extreme Spring security uh, was a great step forward. Uh, that might have made the 3.0 uh, or perhaps tables to diffs would have been the 3.0 and we would now be at four point something because both of them would deserve a major version bump. Um, but we've never had Simmer. And uh, if we start now, we really should uh, apply it in the way it is intended. And I mean, uh, Uli is on the call and warnings NG is at major version nine or something. Uh, by now, uh, and he's really doing it, and he got there in less than a year. So look forward to uh, Jenkins 20 uh, next year or something. Um, and at that point, we can go the browser route and say everything's a major version or just, you know, Ubuntu. This was released in 2021, so that's the version number we're using for it. Yeah, but you know also that if we do that, uh, there will be, uh, you know, uh, what I'm going to call a, a major version fatigue, that people will start caring that it is a major version update and just, or, or maybe not update anymore and move away from Jenkins, you know, uh, if, if, we break, if we make this like uh, looking like we're going to break everything each time, um, which is not the case here, you know. There's definitely a balance there, right? Yeah, because you don't want to do a new major version each week. Otherwise, that doesn't mean it's a major version. Exactly. But if you never do a major version, then people complain that the weekly is different than the previous weekly. So you got to find the right balance. And I don't have an answer right now. And so whomever has strong opinions, you're welcome to start a discussion on the developer mailing list. Uh, for this particular topic, I think that we are definitely not ready to vote for um, the pass. So I suggest we continue the discussion in the developer mailing list. Uh, maybe you, know, you know, I mean, if I were going to create a JEP anyways, but yeah. you know, if if we think that it's going to be a compromise to create a, uh, a detached plugin, why? I mean, I'm I don't really I'm not going to 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 fight for it. I don't want to, I won't die on this hill. I'm just thinking that it's time to kind of bite the bullet. I would say if you look at the numbers, those plugins are installed like uh, the, the biggest one is installed not even 500 times. Uh, my my personal plugin, that's a very, very small one, is installed 4K times. Uh, <laughs> most of those plugins are installed like 60 times or, or 100 times, 160 times in the world. So I'm like, yeah, uh, it's not, uh, probably well, most of those instances are just having those plugins installed and they forgot about them. I mean, I, Emma seems 
3.2, Clover 2.8. But uh, Emma yeah. is not so, Emma is dead since 10 years. <laughs> so I wonder if someone's really yeah, using Emma. Emma tool or MS format? Because uh, this plugin publishes a report in a particular format. Ah, it doesn't okay. mean that you, you have to use Emma tool for that. Okay. I mean, but, um, and, yeah, I mean, I, I think I think we can move on. Uh, Baptiste, I think. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, there will be a jab, mm -hmm. and I think a key part of that jab should be um, explaining which of the alternatives was chosen and why. Because I see yeah, yeah, sure, sure. ones and the detached plugin, perhaps even without bundling. If we want to get rid of the dependent of the plugin as part of the what we deliver, sort of um, taking Basil's approach and just you know accelerating it by a few years um, might actually be a viable alternative. Uh, and if yeah. not, uh, if you think that's not a good a good solution, I would just like to know why. Sure. We will create a job definitely. I think it makes sense to exercise the process and so on. Yeah, I'm fine. For everybody attending here or people watching this recording later, I encourage you to you know watch the list of, of plugins that are already marked deemed as to be broke, breaking when, when this is released and, and voice your opinion. If you think that none of these plugins make sense anymore, like like Uli was saying about Emma typically, uh, I'm interested. We are interested to hear your opinion. And yeah, that will be a job. Thank you very much. Thank you, John. Okay, then moving on. So for Sorry. technology. Yes. One, uh, this might be another one where you might want to email the users list and be like, we're potentially doing a breaking change to these plugins. Don't say it's a core change, but these plugins, we're going to see how many active users there are as opposed to just people who's installed them. Good point. Um... Um, I mean, maybe I could still point to the to the core PR, but yeah. yeah, 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 sure, I can do that. Thank you. Yeah, so technically, it's possible to do some things like that with uh, the telemetry engine in Jenkins, but yeah, it would require. Sorry, what engine? Yeah, same. I was going to ask again what. Uh, so there is JEP two fifteen, if I recall correctly, Daniel. Oh, the analytics. Yeah. So technically, it would be possible to collect um, metrics like that from the Jenkins side. I know not two, 214, uh, but yeah, it would require a change uh, in the weekly release. So you wouldn't get information from LCS. And I guess that uh, the majority of such uh, uh, less adopted plugins are rather on LCS versions. Yeah, suspect also that you know the thing will never be really used because it would mean that we wait for some time uh, yeah. you know, to percolate through the versions. And I guess many, many people are using a null version of Jenkins, using a low version of plugins that actually would, would never see just such a, a, mm -hmm. a, a change in the core itself. Yeah, I'm yeah. not pushing for telemetry uh, for this change. So we can uh, telemetry we've previously backported into LTS because of the uh, timing aspect to it. Um, so we could do that here. Uh, I, th I think we even backported broken stuff. Um, so I would recommend you write better code than me. Um, and in terms of understanding the version combinations that users of these plugins are using, we have the usage uh, statistics um, site that uh, has a matrix of core versions and plugin versions. Yeah, so for example, if, for example, if the pattern is that everyone on Emma plugin uh, is still on Jenkins 1.x, that would tell us that they are, and we can say, well, they're never going to update anyway, so we can stop caring about this particular plugin. Okay. Yes, now you can move on. Sorry, Oleg. Yeah, no worries. So the next topic for us is terminology. So for terminology, we recovered this topic. There is a thread where we are trying to agree at least on some terms. And uh, yesterday I made a call uh, for terms uh, where we seem to have a consensus. 
so yeah, basically these are uh, the terms are listed here and uh, yeah, I'm going to include uh, a few terms right now. Uh, what did they do? You're fine, you're going. Yeah, just, oh yeah. Uh, yeah, so here, for example, um, you know, what we have um, right now, so master node, built-in node, master label, master branch, uh, agent to master security, uh, Jenkins master container. Um, so for port, uh, it doesn't seem that we have a consensus right now because there is still ongoing discussion of how we should call it, whether it should be controller port uh, causes conflicts in uh, Kubernetes terminology. So I guess uh, this topic I will um, exclude from the list for now. We need to keep discussing that and uh, serialization uh, white list uh, it would be now serialization allow list. It's for JEP uh, 200 because it's also quite deeply integrated in our documentation and the core code base. So this is, uh, these are the terms I would uh, suggest uh, to vote on unless uh, there are concerns about any of this term and uh, that we need uh, to keep discussing them. I mean, I already mentioned on the mail list, I'm happy with the list, especially now that it's switched from allow to, sorry, permit to allow. Mm -hmm. Yes. Likewise for me, I think the list looks good. Fine. Do we expect um, potential um, readability issues with English as a second language with built-in? No, it's quite a common word. Well, so so is there an would there be an objection to hyphenating it? I think built dash I, in. Or is that not? Hyphenated labels are weird. I think. Oh, they no are. Problem. Okay, so that's all right. Then, then I retract. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah. Wasn't aware. I of think that. there may even be a uh, grammatical non-determinism in the Antler uh, yeah. grammar for this. Oh, oh, then absolutely retract. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know whether a hyphen is enough to get there. I don't think so, but uh, it should be just alphanumeric. Okay, mm. so we are talking about this built-in or about this yes, built-in? Was... Or about both? Well, the, the name is the yeah. second. Yeah. The, the label. And well, I guess an underscore would work, but it would be a bit uglier even, yes. I mean, a self would be an option, but I still like built-in better. Yeah, built in, built in gives the right message. And I think we should accept, yes, English as a second language may wrestle with it for a while. Okay. Then that's fine with me. Uh, it's just something uh, looking at the term. Uh, it looks like tin, the metal. Uh, so, so I generally, uh, a plus one uh, from me too, but I like, yeah, this, this uh, label looks weird and so I, I'm, I'm sorry maybe I'm, I'm stupid but what's the problem with the hyphen there? Um, the label is used in uh, logical expressions um, and I think the uh, parser that we have for those um, may have problems with certain um, special characters. Um, and I've also in the past had trouble with the auto completion uh, code for labels. Now, obviously, all of that is something uh, that we can probably work on, but it would uh, increase the scope there a bit. Okay. There are some merits because if we make uh, using uh, controller label as difficult as possible, less people will use it. Um, but yeah, speaking seriously, that's actually a good point. Well, and, um, and I can confirm that I do use labels with hyphens in them all over my installation. Um, I haven't detected any problems yet with FreeBSD-12 or AMD64-FreeBSD that are provided by the platform labeler plugin. So 
but I, I mean, I think <laughs> maybe that's what I'm not sure that's what you meant, Oleg, but you nailed it. We don't want people to use built in label, anyways. <laughs> You should yeah, for majority the, of the cases, was, uh, they explicitly want that. So we cannot delete this feature. Yeah, yeah exactly. Also, we won't be able uh, to delete support for master due to compatibility. Uh, but yeah, using uh, Hefan is not a problem for me. Yeah, that's actually a good point. I mean, one of the suggestions that we discussed for, for the replacement term might have been marks was um, reserved to indicate, do not use this, do not build here. Um, and we recently also added uh, a more visible warning message to the Jenkins UI uh, a few weeks ago that basically said, do not configure Jenkins to run builds on the built-in node. So um, I, I would like to retract uh, my uh, 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 concern here. So we take built-in with a hyphen because nobody wants to consider this option, right? I also found about that. I, Depends I what's the label. I, I think well, the same with hyphens. I think if it's messy, it's fine because A, we're not recommending people do it and B, it's pretty easy to type and sticks with the convention of lowercase and like labels. So I, I mean, I can see why built-in is looking like build tin, <laughs> but I I think for a label that we don't encourage, I think it's fine and it's, yeah, or that. So to clarify, you're saying no hyphen. I hate punctuation, I never use it. So yeah. Okay, and I'm, I'm still the other direction. I think the hyphen would be a real help. So okay. I have no objections hyphen. So let's, I think we can, on top of that, you know, we are talking about Jenkins itself, but uh, you know, now we have, I mean, YAML configuration as code things everywhere, groovy scripts, and sometimes things like these, yeah, uh, might be weird or, or broken somewhere. We were talking about compatibility a few minutes ago, right? So, <laughs> so my suggestion for a response here would be that we uh, agree on built-in node and the built-in label. And we will attempt to hyphenate it unless we discover specific, real, and not trivially addressed technical problems with that. In that case, we fall back to not having a hyphen in the label. Yeah. I'm, uh, so, so two comments. Uh, when you put a hyphen in there, then it doesn't look weird anymore. So we can uh, get rid of that comment. <laughs> But uh, I do use hyphens in my uh, uh, labels too, so uh, Honestly, yeah. there's no reason we couldn't support both and just document one. Uh, Actually, there is. Well, we're going to have to support master anyway. Actually, we don't. If you look at my pull request, as I suggested on the dev list, uh, you will see there is migration code. An administrator who is updating from earlier versions of Jenkins needs to click a shiny button to switch from master to built-in. And only folks who uh, start Jenkins for the first time in whatever release of Jenkins includes this change will have the built-in label by default. But what about because... any pipelines that use node master? Well, you can explicitly configure additional labels if you need that to work but there can only be one what is called internally a self-label. It is kind of Fair an enough. implied label that usually corresponds to the node name, except for the built-in node where it is currently master and um, would be something else in the future. Okay, okay. then I re retract. I'm good with built with the dash. So to long didn't fit, we will need an upgrade guide for that. It should well, be automatic, but yes. I mean, uh, the thing is, if you upgrade Jenkins, nothing will change except there will be an admin monitor that says, click here to get the new behavior with a link to documentation we somewhere. We already agreed that the configuration of code use cases might be affected. The configuration of code use cases become default ones uh, in 2021. So I think that upgrade guide will be necessary. 
And probably most of the people who are using that node label are not the ones that are upgrading anytime soon. So it's good to have the docs. Okay, so uh, yeah, one of the options we can still uh, continue discussion for this term. So basically the only consequence that we are blocking Daniel for another, for some time until we build a consensus. Uh, but yeah, uh, I'm uh, fine with built in. I'm happy. Specifically? So there is comment from Batiste in the chat that uh, he prefers self. I know, I think we were joking around. Okay. Yeah, I, I feel like this this dash is my first contribution to the, the Jenkins governance board meeting. So we, we have to keep it at least for until another meeting. Yeah. I, I <laughs> mean, you. as much as I do like self, I think built in is way clearer. So. Okay. So, yeah, anything to discuss on terminology? Um, because yeah, we have one important topic I would like to close uh, today. So, so we have closure already on the all the other topics on terminology. We're we're settled, right? Mm, yeah, that's uh, what I'm asking. Okay, I, good. We do. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. So yeah, next question is about uh, Jenkins, uh, about securing uh, delivery pipelines for Jenkins. So one of follow-ups we discussed at the governance meeting that we would like to adopt uh, security tools. And one of the tools we had in the list was uh, LFX security, which is basically a SaaS version of Sneak provided by the Linux Foundation. And yeah, after the contributor summit, I started this exploring it. Uh, basically, we already have a profile um, well, it doesn't quite work because we discussed one of the previous uh, board meetings because uh, yeah, because of uh, too many uh, dependency issues and the sneak is not good at uh, parsing uh, how our dependency trees work because well, none of the existing tools have, uh, have any idea about how our dependency management works. So we end up with something like 270 uh, um, issues, mostly false positives. And yeah, as a follow up, I reached out uh, to um, LFX security team, asked uh, whether we could uh, basically fix it somehow in a way which would be scalable for the Jenkins project. The answer is no. Um, then we agreed to talk to Sneak directly. We started the conversation with Sneak. As a part of this conversation, we discovered that there is a new LFX security 2.0 under works. And uh, basically in this version, they intend to provide administrative console for users, uh, as well as uh, APIs, including configuration management APIs and APIs for triggering scans. So all the things you get uh, in classic sneak, uh, which would allow us uh, to submit the ignore lists for CVs we don't like to see. Um, and yeah, basically they invited us to participate in the discovery project. And uh, I asked for formal permission to accept this invitation. So what it means for us is that uh, yeah, basically we agreed to participate. Uh, no commitment, uh, but yeah, once uh, there is a pilot version ready, we invited to try it out and adopt. If the project is successful, we would uh, make a joint announcement together with Sneak and the, the Linux Foundation. And the yeah, Jinx will be basically listed as one of the first uh, projects adopting LFX security tool with maybe some testimonials, testimonials, etc. like it usually happens. And um, what we get out of that, we will get direct support from Sneak and uh, LFX security while adopting that, because yeah, most likely in the pilot, we will experience some issues. So we provide feedback uh, and we get help. And hopefully with uh, this mode, we will be able to roll out uh, support for Sneak soon. So currently we have uh, Olivier interested um, in the security organization. There were also some clarification questions from Daniel. Um, well, I guess Daniel is interested as a security officer that is being informed about this project. Um, and yeah, my question is whether we want to accept it as a pilot project yeah. for the Jenkins. Yes. 
definitely. Uh, I, I really see no downside here. Uh, worst case, uh, we try it and cannot get it to work the way we need. And best mm -hmm. case, we have um, we have a dependency scanner uh, that actually works for the crazy ways uh, in which we uh, use Maven and um, has uh, useful results. Um, mm -hmm. And since it has an API, I think I watched the the, the recording mm -hmm. um, that might actually be interesting. Uh, if we if we would consider exposing this, showing users, hey, by the way, um, there's a bunch of old stuff in this plugin you may not want to install anymore, um, which sort of feeds into this plugin deprecation topic as well. Now, obviously, this isn't quite as straightforward, um, but um, I see I really see no downside here. So plus one. Okay. Any objections? Plus one for me. That's one from me as well. Yeah, and another topic, we are looking for maintainers who are interested to participate in the pilot, pilot program. So the idea that we would start from um, a limited number of repositories like the Jenkins core, some libraries and some plugins. Uh, uh, and we would be rolling out uh, LFX security to the entire organization only after that. If someone is interested, please comment on the mailing list. Okay. So I think we can consider it is approved. Yep. Okay, so quick update on the hosting team. Uh, we intend to do a meeting uh, today for onboarding new contributors. Even though we had a few contributors who accepted uh, the invitation, they didn't show up. So basically the meeting uh, was canceled. Well, we still had a nice discussion with uh, Daniel and uh, Alex. Earl, and we created slides, which I posted in the thread. So we, if you're interested, uh, you can just take a look. And uh, once we have somebody who is committed uh, to participate, we will uh, reorganize the meeting and create recording for the slides. But the slide deck is basically enough to understand the idea and to get all the links. So it should be OK even in a synchronous way. OK. So we have a bunch of topics here. Uh, the one topic I wanted to discuss is job project process updates. So it can be done later when we have a, a pull request. And there is a quite an active discussion. So we can just build consensus even with the result governance meeting there. And yeah, for the rest, yeah, I wanted to discuss using GitHub issues for open governance. But yeah, one question to board members that if you could provide feedback on that in the board mailing list, I would appreciate that. Yeah, I'm kind of leaning towards calling in here because it's been a long day of meetings and we're over time. Yep. I'm also wrapping up, so no intention to discuss now. I'm just highlighting that these topics is where it would be great to have a synchronous discussion. And yeah. So I'll move everything to the next thing. Think. Okay, anything else for today? Nope. Okay, I'm off. Bye. Okay. Bye, bye. Thanks, everyone. Have a great bye. day. Thank you all like. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thanks. Yeah, I'll publish a uh, recording tomorrow, I guess. Because it's 10 p.m. in my time zone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks all.